Stephanie Kaplan from Satori Yoga and Healing here. And I'm doing this video this morning from my home in my basement uh, because the weather itself has left us all pretty much housebound. So due to the weather and what's happening in the environment, lots of high wind to come today and lots and lots of snowfall, you'll either be completely housebound and stay inside most of the time or you may end up at some point going outside and shoveling which could certainly have some negative implications for how you feel today. Whether it be sitting still on the couch, nice as that can be, that can create some pretty nasty limitations in the body, so can shoveling. So feel free to take part in this practice uh, with me at some point today if you like, or sometime over the next few days if you stay housebound for a while, or any time that you might find this practice useful. So I've gathered a few items here this morning for my own purposes for practice, and you're welcome to collect any items that you might have in your home, even if they're not these exact items, but I can offer some ways that you can uh, modify or use things that are readily available for you. So I have a yoga mat here, and I'm sitting on a, a cushion, which is just a thin pad, basically a square thin pad. You don't need to have this, I just personally like to use this under my shins. A folded blanket could use nicely as well. If you don't have a mat, perhaps make sure your practice is done on a floor that gives you grip, like a hardwood, and using bare feet so you don't slide. Here I have a large bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you could collect two or three pillows from your bed that could stack up together to make a, a good density and a firm support for you. I also have one hand towel that is folded up to make a support for the back of the neck, the curvature in the neck and another hand towel in case I find that I need a little bit of thin support under the very back of the skull once I have the neck support in place. So these are to be used towards the end of the practice during our restorative postures and shavasana. I also have a fleece blanket for warmth and comfort at the end of the practice. And then I've taken two other standard blankets that you probably have on your sofa or somewhere in your home. Uh, these are just some basic cotton blankets. And so what I've done is taken it from the long fold and fold it in half. So the fringes of the blanket all go together. Then at the top you end up with a smooth crease at the top. Fold it in half so the crease is still smooth at the top, fringes together at the bottom. One more fold. And this itself can act like a bolster, especially if you have two or three of these that you can fold and place together. So I have two here for the end of practice, fleece blanket, two hand towels, bolster. You may want to have a strap nearby if you normally use that in your practice. I also have two blocks. So I've taken these two blocks and I've stacked them sideways. And I straddle the blocks and sit the blocks directly under my pelvis, creating a high perch so there's no strain on the knees and the back can easily find a neutral position. You may also want some tissues so you can clear your sinuses prior to our pranayama. So when you take this seat, the tops of the feet are resting down. The spine finds its natural curvature quite easily. And we'll take the palms down in our lap. So feel free to pause the video here and collect any items around your house that you will find helpful for your practice. And when you're ready, join me in a seated virasana, and we'll begin. Palms facing down, and invite your eyes to close. If that's not comfortable for you, keep the eyes open, but take your gaze downward towards the floor ahead of you. Allow your shoulder blades to drape down your back. Let the crown of the head be drawn upwards. Well, allow our attention to gather in towards our bodies. Notice any sensations you're feeling this morning. any residual stiffness from sleep, from your activities of yesterday.
Notice what parts of your body feel really strong, really sturdy and supported. And then can you gather your awareness to your breath and notice any areas of spaciousness where the breath flows readily and easily. And over the next few breaths, we'll prolong the exhalations. With these prolonged exhalations, giving a gentle drawing inward of the navel towards the spine, gently firming the abdomen. Let the belly be soft and supple as you breathe in, inviting that breath all the way down to the belly and the lower back, a firming of the navel towards the spine and the exhalation. Continue this way for a few more rounds. Jaw relaxed. Tongue falling away from the roof of the mouth. Shoulders falling softly away from the ears. After a few more rounds of this simple, basic belly breathing, we'll do two rounds of 20 Kapalabhati skull shining breath. So if you've seen my last video where I explain the benefits as well as who should do this practice and who shouldn't, just be sure that your belly is feeling free from inflammation, you're not pregnant, not currently menstruating, you don't have a headache at this time or complete sinus congestion. Make sure the nostrils are clear. Two more full breaths, prolonging the exhalation, a little toning of the belly. And with your next exhalation, as you're ready, we'll forcefully exhale at a gentle, steady pace through the nose for 20 rounds. Lean forward, brace with your hands, exhale through the mouth. Pause at the bottom of the exhalation. Press into the floor and roll up your spine to two-thirds of your capacity. Hold the breath in, soften the shoulders. Throat is soft and open. When the urge to arise, arises to exhale, let yourself exhale. One more round of 20 Kapalabhati. Full breath inhale. Belly pumping for the exhalations, releasing for the inhalation. Lean forward, brace with the hands, exhale through the mouth. Pull the breath out, press into the hands, roll up through the spine, inhale to two-thirds of your full capacity, soften the shoulders, throat open. Again, as the urge arises, allow yourself to exhale. Follow your natural rhythm of breath. And 
And gently invite the eyes to open once again. And give some simple movement to the neck, dropping the chin gently down towards the chest. Be mindful of your neck and any limitations you have this morning. As you breathe in, roll your right ear over towards your right shoulder. And exhale and roll the chin back down to the center of the chest. Inhale, left ear to left shoulder. Exhale to the center of the chest. Do that one more time for each side, inhaling over to the right. Exhaling, swaying down to the center. And take it to the left. Full expansive breath. And exhale, center. From the center point with a nice full inhale, left the head rise up, raise the shoulders up. Exhale, drape the shoulders back and down. Draw the shoulders forward with the inhalation. Roll them up towards the ears. Exhale, back and down. Let's shift ourselves forward off of your blocks out of Virasana. Trying to face the long or short side rather of your mat. Place your blocks up to the front of your space on either side, standing tall. If you have a cushion underneath your knees, you can remove that. You can remove any socks you might be wearing or long sleeves or sweaters. Bring ourselves into tabletop position, hands and knees, fingers spread wide apart like rays of the sun, a little wider than shoulder distance, so you've got a good base. <clears throat> Hips lining up roughly over the knees. I um, want you to take your hands a step ahead of where your shoulders are rather than directly underneath. We'll curl the toes under and press them gently into your mat so you get some stretch into the underside of the toes. With your next exhalation, begin to tuck your tail and round your back up towards the sky, letting the chin curl in towards the chest, spread the shoulder blades wide. Inhale, lifting your tailbone so the tail rises, back arches, heart reaches through, forward, and up through the crown of the head with a long neck. Exhale and tuck the tail, round the spine, chin gently towards the chest. Inhale, lifting the tail, back arching, shoulders draping down, crown reaching up. Again, exhale, tuck the tail. Ujjayi pranayama, very helpful throughout your practice. Lift the tail with the inhalation, arch the spine, and come back into a neutral placement on an exhale. Let's take your seat back towards child's pose, reaching those arms forward nice and long, pulling your seat back towards your heels, spread the fingers, and let your forehead come down, resting the third eye point on the earth. Breathe into the width of your rib cage all the way up. Let the shoulders be up a little towards the ears, getting a fuller breath. Exhale, press a little firmer in the hands to push some weight into those toes. As you breathe in, lift the head, gaze forward, pull from the hands, a head into table, and then forward into a knee down plank, draping the shoulders down the ears, firming the glutes. As you breathe in, tuck the tail, round the spine, uncurl the toes, sit back to child pose and breathe out. Inhale and rise up into tabletop, rounding through the spine like the cat, ripple forward to a straight spine like the crown reach, glutes firm. Inhale, tuck the tail, tuck the chin, round the spine, back to child pose, exhale. One more time forward, rising up through the cat. Shift your weight forward. This time, let your hips sink about an inch. Strong glutes pull the chest through and up. So we're not collapsing. We're nice and controlled in our effort here. Lift your seat. Pull back to tabletop. Walk the hands back under the shoulders. Take the hands over like big cat paws. Bend into the side, looking back towards your feet. Breathe into the right side body. Exhale fully. Inhale and walk those paws back to the center and all the way around to the other side. 
Having a long spine as you do this, looking back if you like towards the feet. Breathing into left side body, open pathways. Exhale and draw the belly to spine, walk the hands back to center. Take that stance with forward hands again. Shift weight forward onto the arms, feel the forearms support you. Curl the toes under. Take the weight down through the arm bones, firm the belly, lift your knees, press your seat back. So in downward facing dog, I'd like you to keep your weight down through your arm bones. So what I mean by this, if you're not a regular student at Satori, is that we're not falling back and hanging in the shoulder joint. We're letting ourselves stay stable in the bone support. Then pedal your feet here. Alternate bending the knees. Lift tall into the toes and press down through heels. And lift both heels up, rise tall to the balls of the feet. Exhale and drape your heels back and down. As you breathe in, pull the weight forward into plank position, lower your knees, take your seat back to child's pose. Walk your hands back in child. Roll up to Gadasana again. Take your right arm up to the sky and exhale, bend over to the left. Let your left elbow soften, shoulders down from the ears. Inhale, press into the hand, sweep the arms up and over, landing on right palm, right elbow bends, stretch the left arm. Inhale, drawing back up nice and tall, arms by the side, roll the shoulders up and back two times. Pull them down, away from the ears. Shift your weight forward to table again, spread the hands, curl the toes under, firm belly, lift the knees, downward facing dog. And with an exhale, bend the knees and look forward, walk up to your hands and all the way to the front of your space. Bring your hands to your blocks, straighten the arms and get the back long, reach the heart forward. Check that your weight isn't just in your heels, straining the back of the thigh. Even out the pressure of the weight on the feet. With your exhalation, bend the knees and fold down. Press firmly even through the feet and begin to roll up through your back. All the way to standing, turn the palms of the hands forward in quiet mountain pose. Feel the weight even through the feet. Feel the crown of the head centered above your hips. The breath steady. And with your next inhalation, sweep the arms out and up towards the sky. Bring the fingertips together. Descend them, pressing the palms down in front of the midline. As you pass the hip, soften the knees, fold downward hands to the blocks or your shins to straighten the arms and straighten your back. Breathing in. Fold yourself down. Bend the knees to lower your seat. Draw your chest forward. Arms forward. Rise up to Utkatasana. Bring the hands to the heart center. Take the arms up through the midline. Open the palms. Press the fingertips together. Palms down. Exhale. Hinge as you pass the hips. Hands to the shins or blocks. Inhale and rise straight and long. Exhale and fold. Bend the knees, lower your seat. Heart forward, arms forward, rise up. Hands back to the heart. Inhale and reach up again. Separate the palms. Fingertips together. Exhale, descending. Hinge past the hip. Lengthen halfway. Uttanasana. Folding your way down. Bend your knees, step your right leg back, rock forward and back in your lunge. You're welcome to travel with your blocks here. Let them shift where they go, get support. Keep the breath steady and consistent. Keep the back heel lifted, firm press through both feet. Front leg like a, a pillar from knee down to heel. 
strong through the belly, rise up to standing. Tuck the tail slightly, just so it drops and you feel neutral in your back. Then both knees straight down. Push strong through that back thigh so you're pressing it to the wall behind you. Take the arms up and open to the sides. Bend them down like goalpost arms. Spread the fingers, palms forward. Soften the shoulders. As you exhale, bring the arms together in front. Pull the forearms together. And if you have the capacity, take the right arm up and over the left. And intertwine the fingers to palm. Pretty steady. Keep descending in the front leg. Inhale and open the arms up. Spread the fingers, take the arms back as you push the back leg long and reach forward. Take the hands to your blocks with an exhale. Step the back leg up. Lengthen the half lift, inhale. Breathing out, fold down. Bend the knees, Utkatasana, chest forward. Arms forward, rise up. And bring the palms to the heart center. Inhale, take the arms up. Open the palms, fingers, hips together. Exhale, descend. Hinging, soft, even weight through the feet. Lift halfway, breathing in. Exhale, down. Bend the knees, left foot comes back. Rock in and out of your lunge here. Find a good width, right to left. Find that stable lunge stance. Keep the back heel lifted, pressing through the center of the ball of the back foot. Rise up tall, drop the tail, bend both knees. Take the arms out to the sides, reach upward. Goal post arms, spread the fingers. Gently hug the shoulders down the back. Press the back thigh strong. Front knee drawing forward, breath full and steady. Exhale, bring the arms together in front, or take the left arm over the right for eagle. Shoulders draping down, gazing through the fingers. Inhale, and open up the arms. Fan the arms back as you exhale, press the back leg long, reach. Exhale, the hands come down. Push off from the back foot to step forward. Lengthen halfway. Exhale and fold. Bend the knees, lower the seat, Utkatasana. Arms rise, body rises. Hands to the heart. Inhale and take the arms up. Bend them into the goal posts. Stretch wide. Take your seat back and down. Drop the tail. Weight should be even throughout your feet here. Tail isn't overly tilted forward or under. Finding that neutral point, and if possible, draw the torso upright. So the knees are drawing forward past the toes. Spine is long and neutral. Arms to the side. I'm taking another round of Kapalabhati here. 20 repetitions. the breath out briefly. Soften the knees. Inhale. Roll up the spine. Breathe into two-thirds of your capacity. Soften the shoulders. Hold the breath in gently. Exhale. Inhale. Palms turn forward and rise up towards the sky. Fingertips together. Exhale. Folding down. Hinging as you pass the head. Hands to the locks or shins. Lengthen halfway. Fold yourself down, bend your knees, step both feet back, take a knee down plank. So we get long and sturdy in plank, then bring the knees to the floor. With an exhale, soften those arms, let your seat come down, belly down, chest down. Take the hands out to your sides, creating the gecko stance. 
So the tips of the fingers are on the floor, elbows up, tops of the feet down. So pressing down through three points, fingers, pelvis, and feet. Press down to rise up. Inhale, shoulders down the back, lift. Exhale, and fold yourself down. Try not to come to your maximal point as you breathe in. Rise up, keep the lower ribs on the floor to stimulate the stomach. Nice and important in kapha season. Exhale your way down. Two more times. Press down through feet, hands, and hips. Rise up. Down with the exhale. One more time. Inhale, shoulders straight down. Exhale down. Plant the hands next to the chest. Rise up through the chest again. Generate power from the arms to rise further. Tuck the tail. Sit your hips back and down. Inhale, pull forward to tabletop. Curl the toes. Weight bear through the arms as you lift the knees and press back to dog. Bend the knees. Step your right leg forward. So the left leg is back again. Turn the back heel down this time. Nice and firm. Get firmer in the back leg as you rise up. Tall and steady. Drop your tail. Get this leg engaged. Glide the front knee forward. Take the arms out side to side. Gaze out past the right hand if your neck allows. Shoulders or neck are tender. Bring hands to Anjali Mudra or hands to the hips. And adjust your eye gaze so your neck is sturdy. Soft jaw, steady breath. your next exhalation and push the front leg strong. To get tall, release the hands down to your sides. Turn your right foot forward so both feet point towards the long side of your mat space. Hands on the outside of the legs, even weight through the feet, hinge forward with an exhale. Nice and strong in the belly, slide the hands down to your ankles. Gently hug the shoulders back and down. Take a full deep breath in. Exhale through the mouth. Bend the elbows and fold a little deeper, lifting the tail up. Nice and clear space across the neck and shoulders. As you inhale, straighten the arms straight in the back. Breathing out, bend the knees, arms to the sides, and rise up. Press the legs long, release the hands. Turn both feet towards your left. So the left leg is out, right leg now is turning in and pressing firm, engaging into the ground. Let the front leg just buckle. As it buckles, glide in, drawing the knee roughly over the heel. Torsos towards the long side, arms reaching end to end. Or Anjali Mudra, or hands to hips. Eye gaze to the left. Or forward, same direction as the heart. The breath steady. The jaw soft. And with an exhalation, press the left leg long, rising up tall. Release the hands to your sides. Both feet to the front once again. Now here for standing yoga mudra, some of you may want to use a tie, a towel, a strap if you have one. <clears throat> Particularly if you have neck or shoulder limitations, or if your arm length doesn't suit you for this pose. Taking the hands behind the back, either to interlace the fingers and extend the elbows long, or to hold onto the strap with the thumbs pointing towards each other, taking a comfortable width stance, drawing the shoulders down from the ears, even weight through the feet, full deep breath in, exhale, begin to hinge your weight forward. As you reach your bottom point, keep the spine long so we're not grounding and collapsing. The chest is reaching forward, shoulders breaking down. With an in-breath, let the hands reach up towards the sky. 
tight, firm hold on the strap if you're using it, and exhale as the arms draw towards the sky or towards the head. It's a nice open expansion across the chest. Take that strap wider if you need. One more breath in and out. With the exhale, bend the knees. Start to draw the arms back down towards your seat. Release your strap to the floor. Unhook the hands if they're bound together. Bring the hands to the ground and walk them to the right. Pivot your feet to the right into a lunge stance. Take your right hand to your knee. Left knee can be down or lifted, pressing firm. Press the right hand to twist towards the right. If you like, take the right arm up. Eyes gaze up, spread those fingers apart. Root down through both feet. Press the back leg firm. Then exhale, eyes to the floor. Take the hand down. Right leg steps back and up a three-legged dog. With an exhale, bring that knee in towards your chest as you glide forward to plank. Round the back slightly. Inhale, stretch it back and up. Exhale, bring it into the chest. Back and up with the inhale. Exhale, into the chest. Step it back long in plank. Float it from the ground. Then place it down. Lower the knees. Heart forward. Slight back bend, bring your hips down, belly and chest. Gecko hands wide to your sides, tops of the feet down. Press down through three points. Inhale and lift. Exhale down. Two more times. Exhale down. Reach up with the inflation. Exhale down. Hands come next to the chest. Press the chest up, round the spine, tuck the tail, sit back into child's pose. Press in the palms. Inhale and bring your weight forward. Weight bear down through the arms, shoulders down the back. Curl the toes, lift the knees, and press to dog. Take the left leg up towards the sky in three-legged dog. Draw the knee forward to the chest with the exhale. Inhale, bring it back and up, long stretch. Exhale into the chest and forward. Back and up, breathe in. Exhale into the chest forward. Take the leg back long, hover it off the floor, land it, land the knees, hips, bend the arms, belly, chest. Tops of the feet down, gecko hands, lifting up through the heart, down with the exhale. Hands next to the chest right away, press up into cobra, chest forward and up. Press firmer through the arms, so pull back in child. Rising up, step your hands to the right side. Take the left foot forward. Draw the chest forward, shoulders down the back again. Lift the back knee, press the legs strong. Right hand to floor or to your block. Left hand to the left side. Press against the thigh to twist through the spine. Hips sturdy, left arm reaches if you like, eyes where the neck is happy. Sinking downward through the hips, forward through the front knee, long and back through the back heel. Exhale down to the floor. Remove your block if it's there. Hands to the ground. Take that foot back to three-legged dog. Land it down. Nice and sturdy and downward dog. Deep breath in. 
and exhale, shift your weight forward, lower the knees to the floor, take child's pose. As you come into child, you may want to have a block, so feel free to take that back if you feel you need. Take your left hand back towards your heel. Reach your right arm forward. Then lift the head, gazing down at the earth. Step the right arm over to the left. Grip your heel with your left palm. Begin to pull your weight up, stand on the knees, and curl the toes under. Shift your weight to the feet and the knees. Lift the right arm up. Begin to press yourself forward towards camel pose. So as you're lifting the chest upward, head could be on the heel, could be on block, or you could bring the hand up onto the glute. Hips are pressing forward to line up with the knees, chest lifting upward, right arm tall for half camel. For full camel, take both hands down. I suggest keeping the chin tucked, gazing forward to strengthen the front of the neck. Long and lifting out of the waist while bending into the spine. Nice and invigorating for the kidneys and the adrenals. And I stretch the whole abdomen, chest, and shoulders. Take the right arm to the sky again, big breath in. Exhale, begin to draw your hips back. As the hips come back, chest folds forward, reach to the left, hand to heel. As the hand touches down, uncurl the toes and sweep the right arm back to your side, reaching to the heel, take the left arm forward. Press the heel, begin to rise up, curl the toes again, hand to heel, turning the chest up, dropping that shoulder down, right hand can also come up to the hips. Both hands can be back, hips pressing forward, Legs engaging like you're squeezing them gently together. Heels like you're squeezing them very gently together. Strong through the front of the neck space, full steady breath. Inhale and take the left arm up to the sky. Bring your hips back, reaching slowly over to the side. Steady breathing, uncurl those toes. Both arms to child, or hands resting under the third eye point. Lifting the head, raise the hands to the floor to roll up. We'll collect some items now. Your two hand towels. These two blankets if you have them. We'll actually open one up and fold it into what would be an S fold. So if we took one to a third of the fold in front, one to a third of the fold to the back, place it across your mat. Have the second one in this bolster fold we started with. If you need that much height, we'll strap these together across. If you have a bolster, bring it towards the bottom of your space and your two blocks to stand up on your six inch height, side by side. The blankets are going to be going across the shoulder blades. So we're having a back bend that expands the chest open, 
less about the lumbar spine, even though it is a lumbar back bend, it brings the thoracic spine or the upper spine to a straight position. Nice and important for when we're having a lazy day on the couch. Your legs will drape over your bolster. Knees supported, heels will be on the blocks. Blankets far enough back that it will be under the shoulder blades. So here needing my neck support as well as an extra fold for my head so the head isn't falling back. Bringing me as neutral as I can be and my neck supported. Arms out to the sides. And certainly if you're cold, adding your fleece blanket, even for a little bit of weight and warmth across the abdomen. If it's uncomfortable for you to take the arms to the side, rest the elbows on the blanket supports, bring a hand towards the heart and a hand towards the belly. yourself to progressively relax a little more and more into the supports beneath you. Feeling the openness and expansiveness across the chest. Notice the natural rhythm of the breath beginning to slow down. Notice any spaces that you may be holding tension. Is it possible to soften into those spaces? Maybe invite the breath into those spaces. Allowing tension to melt away with each exhalation.
Inviting in a deeper, fuller breath. And sighing out the exhale. And take a stretch for the arms, a little roll of the wrists. And you begin to walk the legs back onto your pillow supports or bolster. Roll yourself to your most comfortable side. Use your bottom arm as a pillow. And press into the top hand to come back up and prepare for Shavasana. If you can remove these items, Place your blocks on either side of you. Take the top blanket you made into the S fold, open it back up, and roll it up like a yoga mat. We'll place this mat roll underneath your knees. The other blanket that's in a bolster fold, place it lengthwise. We'll just give our back a little bit of support. So place the knees over the blanket roll. The second blanket is immediately behind you, so you're not sitting on it. Your fleece can be ready to be opened up for warmth now. The two blocks, place them down low. We're going to use these for wrist supports. Work your way down onto your blanket. Add your fleece for warmth. Place your neck roll under the back of the neck. And here the remainder of your blanket can be folded in just nicely to create a perfect little nest for you. The hands will come to rest on the blocks with the elbows on the floor, allowing for nice simple drainage of fluids back towards the heart. I invite the eyes to close. Completely relaxing the legs, feeling the support beneath the knees. Draping thighs down like a waterfall into the pelvis. Letting all tension go from the belly. Breath flowing effortlessly. draping of the arms, spilling down from the hands, circulating fluid back towards the heart, the heart rhythm soft and supple. Remain here in Shavasana as long as you like. The 
if you're ready to release from Shavasana. Bring attention to the tips of the fingers and the toes. Let them gently wiggle. Roll the ankles a bit. Pick the hands up. Maybe take a long stretch of the arms overhead. Take a yawn if there's one in there. Stretch the legs. Bring the arms back to your sides. Slide your block away gently. Walk the feet in, and once again, roll to your most comfortable side. Use the bottom arm like a pillow. When you're ready to, you press into that top hand again. Rolling slowly up. Taking a comfortable seat. Bringing the hands to the heart. Lifting the heart to the hands and softening the head towards the heart. Eyes closed. Shoulders soft. With gratitude for your practice and your time today gratitude for you taking your practice with me today. And gratitude for snow days that let us stay cozy, practice in our own inner sanctuary, read good books, and drink warm tea. Honoring the light and all that is divine that glows within me, that same light and all that's divine that glows within you. Namaste.